Today on The Daily Bell Ring, we're taking a look at the Nat Turner Rebellion. Hello, welcome to The Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, please don't forget to answer question number five in the comments below. So Nat Turner's re re Rebellion. Um, this is a, a very violent event to talk about in American history, but it's extremely important when we look at uh, basically slavery in the South and the mindset of Southern slave owners. So Nat Turner. Uh, he was an African-American slave born October 2nd of 1800 in Southampton County, Virginia. Southampton County, Virginia is right on the border with North Carolina there in Southern Virginia. And he's born on the plantation of Benjamin Turner. Now notice Nat Turner, of course, had to take on the last name of the owner of the plantation, Benjamin Turner. But Benjamin Turner uh, was a slave owner that allowed his slaves to learn how to read and write and uh, basically, you know, practice religion. And that's something that's pretty rare on plantations. You got to remember, you know, you may know about, you know, something called slave codes that were, you know, instituted back in the, uh, the 1700s that forbid slaves from being educated. And you might wonder, well, why did they want, not want slaves to be able to read and write? If you think about it, having an uneducated population, that's the easiest way to control someone. So that's why slave owners did not want slaves uh, to be educated because they wanted to basically be able to easily control them. Um, but as a small child, Nat Turner uh, was kind of thought to have special abilities, I guess you could say, because uh, he could kind of like, you know, describe, I guess, events from the past before he was born, uh, maybe see things in the future. So, you know, some people said he was going to be a prophet. He was extremely religious, uh, spent, you know, hours and hours reading the Bible and meditating on the Bible. And that's why, you know, Nat Turner eventually, you know, becomes a, a preacher. But uh, over the years, he works at several different plantations. And actually, he has a pretty typical life for slaves, taken from one plantation to another, being separated from their families, things like that. So uh, Nat Turner ends up working on Samuel Turner's plantation, which was the brother of Benjamin Turner. Uh, and actually in 1821, he ran away and hid in the woods for 30 days, but then came back after believing that he had a message from God telling him he needed to come back for some reason. But after Samuel Turner died, he went and worked for a guy or worked on Thomas Moore's plantation. Uh, and then when Thomas Moore died, he was the property of the widow who then married uh, a guy named John Travis. And he worked on the John Travis plantation uh, there in Southern uh, Virginia. But um, in 1825, Nat Turner believed that he heard a voice telling him that there was going to be a bloody conflict to come. And then three years later, he heard another voice saying that the time is coming, the time is coming. But then in 1831, there was a solar eclipse. And when that eclipse happened, Turner took that as a sign that it was time for the uprising to take place. And so he begins to recruit several slaves to the cause um, from, you know, surrounding plantations. They begin to meet. It's estimated that he had 40 to 50 followers who were all preparing for this uprising. Well, on August 21st, 1831, the revolt began. And him and his followers, first they killed the Travis family. And then they begin to basically run across the countryside. And it's estimated that 55 white men, women, and children were killed during uh, the revolt. But of course, as they're, they're going across these plantations and fighting and killing uh, white slave owners, rumors begin to spread across the countryside and panic begins to grip. Some of the slave owners are believing that the British are invading and that they're going to liberate the slaves. And so there's this huge panic uh, that begins to grip the countryside. And so Turner's plan was to eventually reach Jer Jerusalem, Virginia, which was where the county seat was. That was where the armory was at. And armory is where a bunch of, you know, guns were held. And so he hoped to get all those weapons and continue his revolt. But as he approached Jerusalem, there was a large group of white men there at a plantation just outside of Jerusalem, Virginia, and they have a big, you know, basically gunfight there, and the rebellion basically dissolves, and Turner himself actually runs into the woods and hides in the woods for a number of weeks. Uh, it's estimated that between 100 and 200 African Americans were killed in the revolt itself, but in the aftermath of the revolt, um, the revolt only lasts for two days. In the aftermath, over 50 African Americans were hung uh, for their involvement in it, and actually on October 31st, 1830, Nat Turner is captured and he too is put to death. And so the aftermath of the Turner Rebellion, you know, one would think that this would make Southern slave owners realize that slavery is wrong and that they should stop this practice of slavery. It actually has the opposite effect. 
slave owners basically this reinforces their argument and they begin to say we cannot let slavery go because this is what will happen it'll be a violent uprising and a bunch of people will get killed and so this actually i guess solidifies southern slave owners in their argument to try to keep slavery around um and so it's it's kind of an un, it, it's a very unfortunate outcome of the Turner rebellion and so really in the end slave owners aren't really concerned about morality and doing the right thing. They're more concerned about making profit. And so they're willing to keep slavery around just to basically keep make profits. So anyway, I know a very unfortunate story, not, not a, a nice one to talk about, but hopefully you learned something there. And thanks for watching.